Hey, welcome. In this video, we're going to look at Moon Hands Core. Moon Hands Core is a Maxwell Light device that lets you schedule the launching and recording of clips right within Ableton Live. <laughs> You're probably thinking, well, yeah, we can already do that in Ableton, Craig. But this is like having the benefits of the automation and linear timeline approach of arrangement view, but with the flexibility of session view. This is ideal for sketching out new structures, live looping, and generally performing live. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it installed, set up, and how to use it. So let's jump in and see how it all works. Okay, so first things first, you will need a copy of Ableton Live 11 or 12 suite, as it is a Max for Live device. You can have standard with the Max for Live add-on, but essentially you will need Max for Live. And then you simply drag it onto an empty MIDI track like this. Make sure you press save, which will save it to a user library for future use. Then to enable Moon Hands Core, we just click on the logo here and it brings up the timeline thing we're going to be using. Now, first thing is it has a timeline across the top, which is in bars, and it has our tracks down the left-hand side here. Now these tracks are automatically populated. So if I go in here and I press Command T and create a new track, boom, it creates it straight away for us. Amazing. Now let's go and create our first event. Now events are made by pressing down in one of these empty spaces here. For example, here, if I go to the base track here and I click, I have now made my first event. So what you're seeing here is number one, that's saying it's going to launch the clip that is in the first scene on this track here. And it is going to last for one bar. Up here, we'll show you the length of the event. Now, if you would like to delete that event, you simply click, press backspace. If you'd like the event to go on for longer, you click and drag to the right. Say for example, and that says one, and that's going on for four bars. Then I have some transport controls down here. Now, if I press play, watch what happens. It plays this clip for four bars and then it will stop it. Fantastic, hey? So now you're probably thinking, yeah, nothing new, but then we can go here and we can, we can choose clips from different scenes, a bit like follow on actions. To create an event on a different scene, say here I want this clip, which is on scene two to come in. I go into live and I select scene two, now, if you look up here, scene two is selected. If I now click and drag, it creates an event on scene two and so forth. If I want to do it on scene three, scene four, scene five, etc. So if I press play now, it's going to play the first scene for four bars then the second scene for five bars. There we go. And then it'll stop. See up here, we can offset the start. So that means we can start a little bit before the timeline in Ableton Live starts. So we can, yeah, just offset the start. Then we have a position, like where are we in the playback? What bar? We have a line here, which zooms in and out. So we can zoom in or zoom out. We've got the ability to save and store arrangements. It says patterns, but I like to think of it as arrangements. So I've saved some internally here. Say for example, if I go to this one here, it brings out a full arrangement that I made earlier. This stays within my song, but if say like if I come up with an arrangement of a song, say like I listen to like a drum and bass track and it's quite a good arrangement, I'm like, I want all my tracks to have that arrangement. You could bring this in and arrange it with one click. You could just go read and it would bring up a file here. I have one here already to go and boom. There it is, ready to go. This is really good. If you standardize your tracks, you always have the cinematic tracks, you could arrange your song in like one click, which is amazing. Then you could make some alterations. For example, here, if I go and say, oh, I'm going to delete these, this Timbali event here, and I hold shift, I've then saved this pattern to that kind of grid there. If you turn this follow on, it will show you where you are in this new view. If I don't turn this on, if I press play, things are coming off and on. We have no idea where we are. Whereas if I turn follow on, I do the same thing. 
you can see where things are turning off and on, which is amazing. Okay, so that's the arrangement. Now let's look at one thing that I think is really, really, truly amazing with this device. So it's the thing within Ableton Live Session View that we don't really have, which is the the ability to automatically turn off the recording of a clip. We have fixed length record on the push, but we don't have it in session view. So this kind of helps us do that. But not only that, we can automate the recording of clips on different scenes. So I have a track here called Timbales, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to set up a point where I record two clips. Well, after two bars, I want to do like a little fill into the fifth bar. So I'm just gonna do this. So that's gonna open up a recording window for two bars and then stop. Now, if I want it to carry on playing, I need to like relaunch the clip here. Then maybe I could have it do something like this. So now if I want to have a recording on scene two, here, what I would do is go into live, select scene two, and then go and make an event that lasts for two bars there. Have it come in every other set of two bars. So that basically means I'm recording a new clip on the fly. I'm not having to go in, press record and record. Now let's press play on this. Let's record it. Okay, try something different this time. New recording coming. Two, three, four. <laughs> you get the point, right? That's pretty, pretty fun to play around with. Obviously, this works with audio, not just with MIDI. So great if you got your guitar plugged in you could just have your, your guitar loop around a certain point but then once it's recorded you then have the ability to control when it comes in and out which is a massive drawback for recording directly in session view like in a live performance usually records and then you've got to remove the stop button but then to have it come back in again you've got to launch it all this could be set up automated ready to rock and roll now, the last thing that I think is pretty cool with this is this idea of sketching arrangements. We just talked about saving preset arrangements here. For example, here's an arrangement and here's one, okay? Now, what's really cool is we can now record that arrangement into a range view. So you could have a track populated with some clips, some pre-made arrangements that you could just jam out here, move around. And then when you're happy, you can then turn on this arrange record here so then play through your arrangement and record it into a range view. Okay, let's now record that into arrangement view and see how that works. So if I press this record button here, it's now gonna play through the clips, record it into arrangement view. So let's flip it into the other view to see it in action. And there you go, you see it printing to arrangement view. Great, now if I turn this off here, we now have our printed arrangement. So that's Moonhands Core. It enables you to live loop in session view without any of the limitations you usually find in Ableton Live. Go grab Moonhands, say goodbye to follow actions and enjoy automating session view. See you in the next one.